All right, folks, so if you saw last week's video, you saw me having all sorts of problems with my Z-axis and um, I actually tore it apart, cleaned the ball nut out and put it back together. This week I've got new bearings for um, the motor mount bracket. And so I'm gonna go ahead and install that and take you through the alignment process. So hopefully this thing runs smooth as silk when we're all done. All right, so first off, you saw me fix the ball nut last last week. So I went ahead and ordered some of these bearings. Um, these are name brand, uh, made in America bearings. So I got two of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide one of those on there. Got the other bearing already in there. So let's see. This goes down. Oopsies. Oh geez, making a mess already. That goes down like that. This goes up like this. So actually, can't put that on yet. Wait. Oh my gosh, it's one of those days. There we go, that goes in the bottom. This goes in here. This goes on top. And seat the bearings down in the little grooves here. There they go. Okay, and she should be good, and that feels a lot nicer than what I had before, so then grab the two little nuts. I actually ordered some lock nuts for this thinking that way I could get rid of one of the nuts but I didn't really think about that hard and um, you really can't thread it on very easily so without having some way to hold the ball screw and I'm not about to put vice grips or something crazy like that on the ball screw. This is too big. Nope. So I haven't really figured out a good way to tighten this. I just hold on to the ball screw with my hand and try to snug it up as good as I can. I think that's actually pretty good. Then you put the other nut on there to lock it in place and just kind of snug up on it a little bit. And that's just to keep the first nut from backing out. So and I think you're there, there. Okay, that feels way better than before. It's got resistance in it, but it's like smooth the whole way, so that's pretty awesome. I'm much happier with that. And then you can see the, the nut is actually working its way down, trying to make a mess on my floor with balls. Alright, so Z-axis, I'd call that together. Um, next step is to try and put it on the mill. Alright, so first step I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bolt the ball nut bracket onto its little spot right here with the two little screws. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, yeah, you can kind of see it. There we go. And I'm just gonna, like, I don't know, not snug. It's, it still can move. Okay, so it's it's enough to support it, but it's not gonna, you know, it's still got play in it. So this is pretty much all the play that this bracket has in it, um, with those two screws in it. So I'm also gonna start this big bolt, this is the one that goes in from the inside. I'm not gonna um, get it even anything really snug, just get it in there so that um, we're not moving beyond where this will allow it to sit. Okay, so now all three are in, and this is all the wiggle room that we get out of that bracket. So, honestly at this point I was thinking about letting it down and trying to get it so it sits nice and flush with this. But I think what I'm going to actually do is, because I can already tell, it's even with it all the way, bracket all the way forward, so a counterclockwise motion, still not really perfectly in line with my um, my z-axis gibbs or dovetail whatever you want to call it your your ways so I think I'm just gonna hold it right here and tighten it it's at the max it can go um, I had problems aligning mine I'll go into that in a little while here but for now I'm just gonna tighten the sucker down all the way at the max for its adjustment this way which I say adjustment but it's really not it's literally just the Tolerance in the screw holes is all I'm working with here. 
That one. I need some nice T-handles, that would be nice. From what I've heard, the trick to get that bolt in the back is to grab yourself an Allen key, just a regular one, and chop it so that you've got maybe, maybe like this much hanging off of it that you can just stick in the bolt and then use a wrench. Um, I don't even have an Allen key that size to chop up. This socket doesn't fit, so I get real western with it. I just snug her down with this and call it good. These pliers have been with me for like a decade now. But I haven't had an issue with this bolt coming loose doing it this way, so I'm going for it. That should be good. So that's snug. Then to snug these two up, I just use a normal little handy dandy one like this. Um, something that I can grab onto and really get some torque on. So that one and this one. Alright, time to take it down. This should be fun here. It was hard to even get this um, hammer in here. Oh, there it goes. Okay. So now the mill head the weight is all on the z-axis here, or on the z-axis motor mount I should say. Okay, so th this is kind of important. Um, when I did this the first time I didn't really realize it, but I don't know if you can see it that well. The uh, ball screw, I think it's actually fairly aligned right now. So it look, the ball screw looks like it's aligned on the other side, but if you look over here, that's because there's a gap in between the end of that dovetail and the bracket. So right now, if I were to bolt that down, it would actually pull this ball screw um, forward. And that's how I ran this thing forever. Um, just until like last week I realized that, hey, this thing's binding. So I grabbed a washer, put it in between the way and the, the mount as a spacer, and it helped align it. It was still able to kind of bolt up rigidly. You know, pretty ghetto. Um, something that would be nice to change later on, but for now it works. So I'll go ahead and do that to try and get a good alignment. So next thing I want to do on here is take the load off of this head so that it's not hanging by those bolts. So I'm just going to manually run her down. Alright, so now this is resting. Oh, it's not resting against it. Weird. There it goes. Alright. <laughs> so, yeah, it's actually the ways, I think. It's just a little bit of resistance here and there. Now it's resting against it. So now if I move the ball screw, it raises the, the motor mount bracket up. So I'm going to get that where I'm happy with it. Uh, pretty much I'm trying to just let it kind of rest in its place at the right height. So that's the right height. And then you can kind of see how much angle it has to try and mount it so that it's not binding or getting pulled to one side. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and start by putting these two screws in that are going to be actually mounted tight with no spacers that is. Another thing that you got to look at is to make sure that the screw is aligned left to right as well. So I'm just eyeballing it right now. I'm just going to put that one washer in where I had it before. I had it on the bottom bolt on the left side. We'll see how that aligns. So you can, act, you can actually kind of feel if you go this far you hit a, a stop and I think it's the play in this bearing housing. If you go the other way you hit it. So I'm going to try and just kind of put it right there in the middle. Right about there. Okay, then I'm just going to snug them up. And then I'll go ahead and put the motor on it. And fire everything up.
Oh, and do not forget to lubricate it. This is just a little Lovejoy coupler. I've heard a lot of people complain about them, saying that since there's rubber inside there, that's throwing your um, tolerances all the way out the window. Like, precision ball screws and everything are pointless because you got a piece of rubber in there. But I, I'm able to get like a few thou tolerance out of this machine and repeatability. So let me know what you think. Are these Lovejoy's garbage? I don't think they'd put them with this kit if they were. But. See, my theory is that since the rubber is so tightly packed in there, that it really doesn't give you much as far as um, compression. It's just enough to maybe change the angle a little bit, make up for some misalignment. And that's really about it. But that's just my theory. If you guys have more experience, let me know what you think of these Lovejoys. Sadly enough, I feel like I'm getting good at taking this Z-axis apart. It's a skill that I don't really want to have. Alright, motor is on. All oh, these bolts are tight. These bolts are tight. The bolt inside is tight. Just need to grease it. I want to say thank you to a guy named Sammy that commented on my last video. He said, hey, don't use white lithium. Go ahead and just use some whey oil on there. I think he specified 68. I see a 68 on there, so I'm going to go for it. And uh, hopefully that works better than what I was doing before. Let's turn her on, see how she goes. All right, I may have cheated and moved it for a second, but listen to this. That's pretty nice, huh? Let's go rapid. I haven't done this yet. Oh! Oh! Nope. Didn't like that top part, though. We might not be aligned all the way. All right. So yeah, we need to adjust the alignment a little. If you look up there, you might be able to see that the ball screw is kind of pushing towards the left a little bit at the top. That means I probably need to just loosen up those four bolts on the motor mount and move it to the right a little bit, center it. Some trusty orange here. I'm actually going to use the handle of it. Look how redneck this is. There we go. Let's leave her there for a sec. Just slowly go up. I'm happy at the top there. Ball screw's chattering away a little bit too. Well, I don't need to run it that high. <laughs> Probably doesn't have very much oil in it either. That sounds very nice though. That I will say without a doubt that that's the nicest this has ever sounded. So I'm going to loop it up again. Maybe I use too much oil, I don't know. I feel like I'd rather use too much than not enough. The other thing is inside that, that ball nut, they're all dry in there. Let's get a good coating on them before I start running this sucker for this order. Let's just speed the jog up a little bit. That's pretty, pretty nice. Ugh, it runs again. A lot quieter, a lot healthier sounding. One thing I think I mentioned in the last video, actually I know I mentioned it in the last video, Now it went up there, I wasn't all the way happy, but anyway, I mentioned it in the last video that my dip switches on my stepper drivers were turned to give it more current than it was supposed to. So I turned those down, and so now I'm wondering if I might introduce a problem. I, my motors were stalling before because of the ball nut being jammed up. Now I'm wondering if my motors might stall because I don't have enough torque. So we will see, I'm going to watch that really closely. But it does sound a lot better. And the motors are nice and cool. They usually get warm. This 
force into that. I think playtime's over. Another question for any of you folks that already are in the same position as me here. What do you set your rapids to? Like, what's the fundamental limit? Can you go until the motors are missing steps? Do these ball screws have a limit on them? Uh, I'm up to 90 inch a minute. And you can tell it's really not super duper fast. Um, it'd be nice to crank it up even more. Uh, what's the limit? Let me know. Or how do you find the limit of your machine? That would be nice too. All right, folks, I'd love to sit and chat a little bit longer, but machine's up, and I still got that order to finish from a few weeks ago. So I got to get to work. I will see you next week.